The top stories tonight in Y News. A lawmaker in the upper chamber speaks on the call of opposition groups for the administration of President Ferdinand Marcus Jr. to support the investigation of the International Criminal Court into the war on drugs of his predecessor, former President Rodrigo Duterte. The transport group Piston remains steadfast in its call for the permanent abolition of franchise consolidation under the government's PUV modernization program and the removal of the looming December 31 deadline. A former Department of Justice secretary claims asserting that Judge Henerguito of the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court Branch 206, who granted bail for Senator De Lima, was her former favorite student. And find out the concerns and opposition raised by the United Nations, the United States, Japan and South Korea regarding North Korea's recent launch of a rocket into space carrying what they claim to be a spy satellite. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, November 22, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. We are also seen at 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV news and rescue social media channels. I am Harini Delgado. First in the news. The transport group Piston remains steadfast in its call for the permanent abolition of franchise consolidation and the removal of the looming December 31 deadline. The group asserts that the modernization of public utility vehicles or PUVs could potentially escalate into a legal battle if their concerns continue. Regulatory Board or LTFRB and the Department of Transportation. The president of Piston has issued a warning indicating that their opposition to the PUV modernization program may escalate into a legal confrontation unless their grievances are addressed. Uh, hindi malayo na umabot po tayo sa legal battle. Mayroon lang mga ilang inaayos pa at uh, pag-aaralan po natin kasi malino naman po ang batas ng yung ating prangkisa ay galing sa batas. Yung pumpi ay galing sa executive order. Hindi naman pwede yung isang executive order ay mandato niya yung Republic Act. Ang uh, panawagan natin sa LTPRB at uh, mismo kay BBM ay yung pagbasura sa 2017-011. Dahil ito naman yung punot, uh, punot dulo ng, uh, kahira, ng uh, kalituhan sa hanin ng ating public transport at siyempre yung pagbasura dito sa deadline ng uh, December ng uh, 3031. Dapat ito yung hinaharap ng LT permit ng DUTR. Piston is urging the LTFRB to issue an executive order incorporating what they deem feasible provisions such as a five-year franchise to safeguard the interests of PV operators. Despite the conclusion of the three-day Piston transport strike today, the group has announced its intention to persist with its advocacy. Plans are in place for a laydown transport strike and protest actions until the government heeds their demands. Ang uh, sinasabi natin sa gobyerno ay kung gusto talaga ng gobyerno na ayusin yung ating public transport, bakit hindi payagan sa balangkas ng rehabilitation? Bakit kilaga namin bumili ng 2.8 million, 3.3 million sa namin kukunin yung uh, pambayad sa mga sinasabi nilang modern? At tandaan po natin, yung mga modern na tumatakbo rito ay hindi po yung brand. Yan po ay surplus na rin na galing sa iba't ibang mga bansa na dito ay tinatapon sa atin. Tensions rose near the provincial capital in Manolos, Bulacan as Manibela's group joined forces with a jeepney strike, amplifying their collective call for the government's attention. Their primary request, an extension of the deadline set by the LTFRB, pushing back the consolidation mandate to December 2023. Additionally, they urged the government to reconsider the PUVMP program, specifically challenging the controversial phase-out of the iconic jeepney. Aming ipinaglalaban dito ay yung pagbibigay sa amin ng deadline ng consolidation ng hanggang December 31, 2023. So kapag itinatanong naman namin sa kanila kung ano yung nagiging tugon nila after nung December 31, 2023, kung hindi kami pumasok ng, P ng consolidation, ang problema doon, wala silang maisagot. So uh, sa madaling salita, siyempre ang inaayawan namin dito yung pag-face out. 
The echoes of the strike reverberate beyond Malolos, extending to the towns of Norzagaray, Mekawayan, Kalumpit, Bokawe, Santa Maria, and Baliwag in Bulacan. Meanwhile, the repercussions of the strike are felt in education. Starting today, November 22, until Friday, November 24, all levels of private and public schools in Malolos are compelled to suspend face-to-face -face classes. This measure is a response to the extensive three-day jeepney strike led by Manibela, which has left the city without passenger jeepneys. Acknowledging the potential challenges faced by workers, the local government unit has stepped in. They're providing free rides for those employed in the private or public sector, ensuring that individuals don't encounter difficulties returning home amidst the transportation disruption, utilizing nearby available vehicles. In other news, a former cabinet secretary, a former president, Rodrigo Duterte, believes that the current anti-Duterte campaign to include the House resolution urging the government to cooperate with the International Criminal Court, or ICC, has approval from the House Speaker. Dante Amento tells us why. Former presidential spokesperson Harry Roque revealed Wednesday, November 22, that he received an information that the House leadership will approve the resolution filed by Manila 6th District Representative Bienvenido Abante Jr., urging the government to cooperate with the International Criminal Court or ICC's investigation over the war on drugs of the Duterte administration. Ang balita ko pa, dahil ako naman po ay galing dyan sa Kongreso, abay sa susunod na linggo, aapruban na raw yan sa plenaryo. Eh, ewan ko nga eh, bakit biglang minadali? Roque further said that this move is to persecute former President Rodrigo Duterte and Vice President Sara Duterte and for them to be out of the world of politics. Kung hindi itutuloy ang impeachment para matanggal ang bibisara, Abay susuportahan naman nilang investigasyon laban sa mga Duterte na posibleng maging dahilan din para magkaroon ng warrant of arrest laban kay BP Sara. The former official believes that House Speaker Martin Romualdez has a blessing of the anti-Duterte campaign. Wala pong nangyayaring kontrobersyal sa House na hindi binibigyan ng basbas ng Speaker. Parang Diyos po talaga ang Speaker sa House, lalong-lalo na kapag budget season. Even Justice Secretary Crispin Boying Rimulia also allegedly seems inclined to study the House resolution which is completely contrary to the President's position. Ito ngayon ang maging basihan para magpatuloy itong sinasabi ngayon ni Justice, Justice Secretary Rimulia na pag-aaralan ngayon ang issue ng pagtulungan sa ICC. Bagamat ilang beses na rin niya inulit ang sinabi ng Presidente hindi na makikipagtulungan. Noong Agusto, matapos namin magpulong kay Presidente, sinabi na ni Presidente, tapos na ang engagement namin sa ICC, hindi tayo makipagtulungan dahil ito ay hindi na tayo miyembro, wala na jurisdiction ng ICC. In a statement, Rimulia said the House resolution needs a serious study considering the Philippines is not anymore a member of the ICC. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Former Department of Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre III has made a startling claim, asserting that Judge Henerguito of the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court Branch 206 was a favored student of former Senator de Lima during their time at San Beda Law School. Guito notably is the judge who granted bail to former Senator de Lima, citing allegedly weak evidence in her last illegal drug case. Aguirre, in a statement, expressed the belief that the former senator should have disclosed her relationship with Judge Guito, raising questions about the impartiality of the judicial process. Talagang meron palang relasyon. So, kung hindi ito na-disclose ng judge na yun, then uh, meron itong uh, parang, uh, well, kasi yung ibang mga judges, pag... Uh, Alam nila na maaaring i-consider yung isang circumstance na yun, katulad ng pagiging isang estudyante, dapat dinidisclose mo yun doon sa other party. 
Even former presidential spokesperson Hari Roque emphasized the prosecution's right to be informed about such affiliations, given the potential impact on the case. As of now, former Senator Dalima's camp has remained silent on the matter, offering no reaction to these serious allegations. And for the news abroad, North Korea has claimed to have successfully launched a rocket carrying a spy satellite into space. Ryuji Sasaki will give us the details live. Yes, Ryuji, good evening. Good evening, Elsie. A North Korean military spy satellite has allegedly been launched into space after failing two attempts earlier this year. President Kim Jong-un observed the launch as the satellite named Maligyong-1 accurately entered orbit, according to North Korean state news agency KCNA. The United Nations, along with countries including the United States and Japan, have condemned North Korea's spy satellite launch programs. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida stated that North Korea's use of ballistic missile technology to launch a satellite is a clear opposition to the Security Council resolutions. It has not been confirmed if the satellite is operational, but South Korea believes the North may have received technological assistance from Russia. The North Korean president previously met with his Russian counterpart in September, where Moscow offered to help Pyongyang with its space program. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Ryuji Sasaki, reporting live from Japan. Tensions in the Korean Peninsula are escalating as officials from Japan, South Korea, and the USA are yet to confirm the success of North Korea's recent launch on a spy satellite. Responding to the situation, South Korea has announced an intensification of its military surveillance activities. In light of these developments, South Korea has suspended a portion of the Comprehensive Military Agreement, or CMA, between Pyongyang and Seoul. The CMA, signed in 2018 by former South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, aimed to de-escalate de tensions on the Korean Peninsula. The agreement included measures such as the suspension of live fire drills, the establishment of no-fly zones, and the removal of certain guard posts in the demilitarized zone. In a strong statement, the U.S. National Security Council spokesperson Adrian Watson condemned North Korea's actions. We are aware of the DPRK's launch of a space launch vehicle and are consulting with ROC and Japan, um, as well as other regional allies and partners. We know this is another example of destabilizing action in the region. Um, and we, again, just reiterate our very firm commitment to um, uh, the Republic of Korea and Japan, but how it's going to affect the DPRK's military capabilities, I just wouldn't be able to speculate on that. These launches, again, are destabilizing. They violate UN uh, Security Council resolutions. South Korean Prime Minister Han duk Su led a cabinet meeting, publicly declaring the decision to halt a section of the inter-Korean pact. Meanwhile, South Korean President Yoon Song Yoo Yo, currently on a state visit to Britain, took part in a video conference with the National Security Council and several ministers to address the situation. The World Food Programme stated that there is a looming threat to Ukraine's wheat production as it a struggle to meet both domestic and export demands in the coming years. Matthew Hollingworth, the WFP's director in Ukraine, warns that if the Black Sea export routes remain blocked and attacks on food infrastructure persist, the nation's agricultural production faces a dramatic impact. In a move to address this challenge, back in August, Ukraine established a temporary export path for agricultural shipments, facilitating the movement of over 700,000 metric tons of grain. However, when compared to the usual 33 million metric tons exported through the Black Sea, this temporary arrangement falls significantly short. Meanwhile, on the other side of the geopolitical spectrum, Russia's agriculture minister reports a different narrative. Russia has commenced free grain shipments, totaling up to 200 
thousand tons to six African countries, fulfilling a pledge made by President Putin back in July. This stark dichotomy in agricultural strategies between Ukraine and Russia adds another layer to the complex dynamics of the region. A lawmaker in the upper chamber has questioned the resolution filed in the House of Representatives urging the government to cooperate with the International Criminal Court or ICC in its impending probe on the so-called bloody drug war of the Duterte administration. Senator Aimee Marcos says President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has been vocal that the Philippines has a working justice system and its courts will not be rendered subordinate to the ICC. Earlier today, the House Committees on Justice and Human Rights tackled the resolutions urging the Philippine government to work with the international body's investigation. Amid the political power play, the presidential sister maintains that she and the president are in good terms with the Dutertes. The National El Nino Task Force regularly holds a meeting geared towards preparing the government's response to mitigate the impact of El Nino in the country. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council said that among the discussions span a range of critical concerns, including the potential impact on the country's supplies of food, water, electricity, and the broader implications for public health. Ang naging papel po ng National El Nino team ay siguraduhin na harmonized or magkakaugnay itong mga ginagawa na ito ng mga ahensya. Ang kanila pong ginagarantiya ay ang kahandaan ng ating mga ospital para sa ganitong klase ng mga sakit. The Department of Agriculture is actively engaged in recalibrating its programs, particularly those pertaining to food production. This strategic move comes in response to the extended duration of El Nino, which is now projected to last until the third quarter of 2024. The Department of Agriculture recommends the cultivation of crops that require less water in areas projected to receive limited rainfall. Is a strategic move to mitigate the potential impact on the agricultural landscape. The consideration also extends to the exploration of cloud seeding operations an artificial means of inducing rainfall. This measure is being weighed as a proactive step to alleviate the looming scarcity of precipitation. Mag-recalibrate uli kami ngayon kasi include na yung wet season of next year. Yung previous uh, forecast kasi hanggang ano lang eh, hanggang March, then yung residual uh, effect mo until the second quarter. But sa ngayon, second quarter na, ang possible, uh, ang El Nino, so we add more uh, uh, one quarter para dun sa residual uh, impact niya. As explained naman ng pag-asa, usually may mga bagyo tayong dumadating and pag may bagyo, medyo mas destructive siya during the time of El Nino. So, yung forecasting po uh, should take into consideration yung mga ganun na sinabi. Up to 350 parliamentarians from various countries will grace the 31st Asia-Pacific Parliamentary Forum or APPF hosted by the Senate of the Philippines. The three-day forum will happen at the Philippine International Convention Center, or PICC, beginning tomorrow, November 23 to 25. According to Senate President Juan Miguel Migzibiri, delegates from 19 countries have confirmed to attend the forum, where various issues will be discussed, including political and security matters, economy, trade, and regional cooperation. Medyo, uh... Uh, humingi po kami ng paumanin, baka magtataka yung mga kababayan natin, bakit napakaraming may wang-wang, napakaraming may mga escorts, dahil po yan sa ating mga member parliaments. One of the key features of the forum will be the resolution about the maritime disputes in the South China Sea. 
Zuberi says as the forum's host, he wants the discussion on the West Philippine Sea issue to be as diplomatic as possible, with Chinese delegates also participating in the event. In a significant development, the House of Representatives and the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, have reached an agreement to apprehend motorists using license plates with number 8, commonly known as protocol plates. House Secretary General Reginald Velasco confirmed the agreement with the MMDA through images he shared, emphasizing that drivers utilizing the eight protocol plates should not be tolerated. The number eight protocol plates are exclusively designated for vehicles owned by members of the House of Representatives in the Philippines. This consensus comes on the heels of a memorandum issued by the House Secretary General directing the revocation of all expired and fake special eight plates. The move underscores a joint effort to address issues related to the misuse of protocol plates and maintain accountability among drivers. And in other global news, Israel and the Hamas militant group have agreed to a ceasefire set to take effect in the next 24 hours. This marks the first ceasefire since the beginning of the conflict. As part of the agreement, Hamas militants will release 50 prisoners from Gaza in exchange for the release of 150 Palestinians held in Israel. The negotiations were facilitated with the assistance of the Qatari officials. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stated that those to be released by Hamas include women and children. <laughs> Additionally, Hamas has committed to releasing 10 captives each day for the duration of the ceasefire extension. Qatar's chief negotiator, Minister of State and Foreign Ministry Mohammed al khulaifi mentioned that the International Committee on the, of the Red Cross, or ICRC, will collaborate within Gaza to expedite the release of hostages. Currently, four hostages have already been released from Gaza, including U.S. citizens Judith Rannan and her child, along with two Israeli women, Nurit Cooper and Yocheved Lipschitz. The ceasefire and ongoing negotiations aim to ease tensions and foster diplomatic solutions to the conflict. In a surprising turn of events, the far-right outsider Javier Milley has emerged victorious in the Argentine presidential election, securing 56% of the votes against his opponents, Sergio Massa, who garnered 44%. The election outcome has garnered attention globally, with former U.S. President Donald Trump expressing his approval of Milley's win. Additionally, Brazil's former President Jair Bolsonaro hopes that these developments will bring hope to South Africa. America. Millet, often referred to as El Loco or Madman by critics, has made bold promises of significant changes, including the elimination of the local currency, the peso, and exploding the central bank to curb inflation by preventing further printing of money. In addition to Millet's victory, his running mate Victoria Villarreal has also won the vice presidency. The newly elected officials are set to be sworn in on December 10 and will serve a four-year term in Argentina. This unexpected political shift has raised questions about the direction Argentina will take under Millet's leadership and the potential implications for the region. On Tuesday, November 21, leaders of the Global South discussed the Israeli-Palestinian conflict but faced challenges and failed to agree to a joint declaration on a peaceful and political resolution. Mavian Dog tells us why. Leaders of the BRICS bloc, chaired by South Africa, held a virtual summit on Tuesday and strongly condemned Israel's attack on civilians and advocated for an immediate ceasefire in the conflict. The bloc is composed of Brazil, 
Russia, India, China, and South Africa. All are emerging economies referred to as the Global South. In the summit, different leaders voice out different aspects in the Gaza conflict. South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa emphasized the group's call for restraint. He also acknowledged the lack of time to draft a detailed declaration. China's President Xi Jinping sympathized with the long-ignored rights of the Palestinian people. On the other hand, Argentina's foreign ministry stated that it recognizes Israel's right to legitimate self-defense while strictly respecting humanitarian international law. India has not been as vocal compared to other member countries, but provided a stance on the need for restraint and peaceful resolution through diplomacy. Meanwhile, Russia's President Vladimir Putin criticized the United States' failure of diplomacy in the Middle East and called for a joint international effort to find a political solution. While the group did not reach a joint declaration, the chair's summary reflected their growing concerns over the forced displacements of Palestinians as war crimes and a collective call for urgency in achieving ceasefire. As a group, the countries in the BRICS bloc make up about a quarter of global economy and around 40% of the world population. The group aims to offer another voice and accelerate the reshuffling on the current Western-dominated world order. The recent summit also included leaders from countries that will officially become members in 2024. Saudi Arabia, Iran, Ethiopia, Egypt, Argentina, and United Arab Emirates. Mavian Dog, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Apple revealed upcoming changes to its iMessage platform that are said to bring about a notable shift in the messaging landscape. The company unveiled plans to integrate iMessage features with Android, including read receipts, typing indicators, and enhanced quality for video and image sharing. These modifications are expected to enhance the overall user experience across platforms. Starting next year, iMessage will transition to utilizing Rich Communication Services, or RCS. This move has been long advocated by the European Union and Google, as it is poised to facilitate smoother communication between the two software platforms. The decision to embrace RCS marks a notable step forward in interoperatibil interoperability allowing users of Apple devices and Android devices to seamlessly communicate with each other using advanced messaging features. This move is expected to bridge the gap between the two major operating systems, fostering a more interconnected and user-friendly messaging experience. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcus, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. Arcas on Bahai. As the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the global prayer for humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you.
And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God from the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 17. It says, Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. And those are the reasons behind the news, November 22, 2023. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. Because we need to know. We will always ask why. I'm Harleen Delgado. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Uh, hindi malayo na umabot po tayo sa legal battle. Mayroon lang mga ilang inaayos pa at uh, pag-aaralan po natin. Kasi malino naman po, ang batas ng ating prangkisa ay galing sa batas. Yung pong PA galing sa executive order. Hindi naman pwede yung isang executive order ay mandato niya yung Republic Act. Ang panawagan natin sa LTPRB at uh, mismo kay BBM ay yung pagbasura sa 2017-011. Dahil ito naman yung punot, uh, punot dulo ng, uh, kahira, ng uh, kalituhan sa anin ng ating public transport at siyempre yung pagbasura dito sa deadline ng uh, December ng uh, 3031. Dapat ito yung hinaharap ng LTE permit ng DOTR. Ito ngayon ang maging basihan para magpatuloy itong sinasabi ngayon ni Justice, Justice Secretary Rimulia na pag-aaralan ngayon ang isyu ng pagtulungan sa ICC. Bagamat, Ilang beses na rin niya inulit ang sinabi ng Presidente hindi na makikipagtulungan. Noong Agusto, matapos namin magpulong kay Presidente, sinabi na ni Presidente, tapos na ang engagement namin sa ICC, hindi tayo makipagtulungan dahil ito ay hindi na tayo miyembro, wala na jurisdiction ng ICC. Talagang meron palang relasyon. So, kung hindi ito na-disclose ng judge na yon, then... Uh, Meron itong uh, parang, uh, well, kasi yung ibang mga judges, pag uh, nalam nila na maaaring consider yung isang circumstance na yun, katulad ng pagiging isang estudyante, dapat dinidisclose mo yun doon sa other party. Ang laking kahihiyan talaga sa Pilipinas kapag kumakot yung ICC na yan, ay pa, kaya pa, ganyan. We are aware of the DPRK's launch of a space launch vehicle and are consulting with ROC and Japan, um, as well as other regional allies and partners. We know this is another example of destabilizing action in the region. Um, and we, again, just reiterate our very firm commitment to um, uh, the Republic of Korea and Japan, but how it's going to affect the DPRK's military capabilities, I just wouldn't be able to speculate on that. These launches, again, are destabilizing. They violate UN uh, Security Council resolutions.